All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is, uh, is this really the best way to protect the United States? Uh, apparently this is gonna be uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson speaking on Trump's Golden Dome idea. Um, I do think that uh, the, in principle, sure, great. I have no idea how it's gonna work though. Right, like if we are just using specifically uh, the Iron Dome, Israel's Iron Dome as the overall template, guys, we already have things better than that. Um, the Patriots, that, Aegis, GMDs, guys, right? We already have things that are better than that. Uh, but the problem is, is that money, think about money here. What is it, fifty dollars to $100,000 for every missile that, that's basically used to intercept another missile? Uh, if you watch the Iron Dome, they're sending out like, you know, 50 of them at a time, guys. I may be exaggerating here, but it's a gigantic amount of them that are basically being sent out here. Uh, each battery specifically for uh, the Iron Dome also costs from 50 to $100 million, each battery. Okay. So guys, we already have systems set up for this here. Um, I mean, I get it. The long range threat is absolutely in our face, if that makes any sense here. But hmm, thinking about all the, the numbers also involved in this here, what $175 million or so is what is speculated for that project to actually cost. Uh, that is basically the exact amount of money Doge saved us. Guys, no. Okay, um, I don't like the idea of, of having to spend more money for this type of stuff, guys, being that we already have systems um, that can already do things like this. But also at the same time, the United States of America is much bigger than Israel, so that should not be a template. Like, you understand how, how in your face the Golden Dome would be on a daily basis and for no reason, guys? Like, for no reason. Understand that for a second here. I get it. The threats are there, right? The threats are there. I think that they should probably be in places where, um, you know, China, Russia, North Korea actually have the ability to reach. The, that would make more sense. Uh, or putting um, some type of Iron Dome, let's say, over um, like a, like overseas military bases and things like that or, or like specific cities, right? But covering the entirety of the United States of America, guys, how? How? But either way, let's go ahead and jump into it immediately, guys. Sorry to be so long-winded. I just have a lot to say about this topic, let's say. But either way, let's do it. A golden dome? What's up with that? You might have heard about the plans to build a golden dome over the United States to mm -hmm. protect us from incoming missiles, right. from adversaries and enemies. It's inspired by what's known as the Iron Dome over Israel where there's a missile defense system where if it detects and tracks an incoming missile, it then sends counter missiles to destroy it in midair. $200,000. So because iron is a strong metal. Right. We use iron to make steel and mm -hmm. make skyscrapers out of that substance. Gold is not. We don't make skyscrapers out of gold. Right, it's, it's soft. It's valued in other ways. But gold is one of the softest metals on the periodic table. Uh, do you remember old cartoons and some old westerns? Someone would pay for a drink or a whiskey with a gold coin. And they'd bite and it. And the person who receives it bites it. That's because the simple pressure from your teeth and your jaw would indent yeah. the gold, verifying that it was the soft metal we call gold. So it's a little odd that we would call a defense system. Okay, he's kind of picking things apart here, guys. The name really has nothing to do with it. It's just, you know, Trump likes gold. I think that's really what that is there. Um, but he is uh, potentially being facetious here. Gold. It's more evidence that the president likes shiny objects and then understands elements on the periodic table. But okay. it's the idea that counts here. Is this something we can or should do? So... Let's reflect on what this would mean. You might not have known that we already have a missile defense system in place in Greenland and on the West Coast that protects us against the launch of intercontinental ballistic missiles detected by satellite. And once it's seen coming over the horizon, we have means of destroying them in mid-flight. Now, let me distinguish the two kinds of weapons. So a ballistic missile gets launched but with such velocity and at such it goes altitude out of outer space that it comes leaves down. Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. And most of the distance it traverses is out of space. suborbital, which means once it leaves the atmosphere, only gravity commands its trajectory from there onward. And that's the definition of the word ballistic. 
if something is ballistic, its arc is measured entirely by the force of gravity. Kind of why we use the word also, right? You're going ballistic. And by nothing else. What right. makes ballistic missiles so deadly is that because they're suborbital, you can launch from any place on Earth mm -hmm. and hit another target within 45 minutes. Because a full orbit around Earth, low Earth orbit, takes 90 minutes. So you're never gonna have to go three quarters of the way around the Earth to strike an enemy. You would just go the other direction. So if you wanna protect against this, you wanna do it while it is in the larger part of its orbital path. Uh, later on, it becomes much, much harder to do so. The most straightforward way of detecting a ballistic missile is on launch, because that's when it has a signature that can be identified by our satellites in orbit. These are reconnaissance security satellites. And once you get that, and once you have its trajectory, you can then instantly calculate what an intercept would be, and provided you have missiles ready to do so, uh, you are protected. So that would be a ballistic missile. Then you have other kinds of missiles, hypersonic missiles and artillery, these kinds of things, where often you can launch those from mobile platforms. So you don't always track where it might come from. And so a launch might be successful and you'd have to sort of wait until it got high enough above the horizon to detect what it is, where it's coming from, and possibly do something about it. So it's two sort of categories of missile attacks. The second category, your enemy has to be much closer to you to make that work because it's not going suborbital to cover the intercontinental distances that ballistic missiles are known to do. You might ask, is it even possible to completely protect a country the size of the United States? Yeah. Throw in Alaska as well, and, Hawaii. And, and Hawaii. Territories. Places remote from the lower 48. Uh, I don't know. I know it's possible to protect us from certain compass directions from the United States, where we know we have sworn enemies. But to think we'd be able to do that in every possible direction, from every possible place on Earth, it comes with a built-in assumption that we would ultimately make enemies of the entire world. I, I don't know I mean what our conduct will be in the okay. future that could possibly trigger that. I do One know look that at right it. now where we have known sworn. Well, I guess that is the, whoa, guys, my, my, my monitor just went off, hold on. Okay, hold on, we're, we're back. Either way, um, we're, we're on battery backups now. Uh, but either way, so here's the thing. Um, yeah, that's basically the point here. I do think that allegedly, apparently, at some time, yeah, that may be the case here, right? I mean, um, you know, no one wants anything like that to happen, but I do think that it's a, it's, it's a possibility at the very least here, guys, right? Foreign enemies of the United States, we have missile defenses looking in their directions. And the cost of this... How long is this? A minimum several hundred right. billion dollars. Is that what we're spending all this money on that's being I'd, saved? I'd, I'd rather By the way... The entire that Apollo money. program, from start to finish, go ahead, was about a hundred billion dollars. Okay, but it, that was was it was a hundred billion back then, or would that be a hundred billion now? Right? Ultimately, how effective is a golden dome anyway? A golden dome presumes that the method of attack will be from the sky, from everywhere, right? Be it high in the sky or from space itself. Okay, and it's not imagining that there could be an attack from within. In fact, in 1946, J. Robert Oppenheimer, testifying in front of a closed door session of the Senate on how safe we might be now that the world has entered the realm of atomic weapons. With the atomic if people age. brought an atomic bomb into New York City, would we have a way of detecting that? They said, what possible technology would enable this because they're ready to pay for that. Right. We want to right. protect our borders. Mm -hmm. What advanced technology will allow us to detect an atom bomb brought in by truck into a major metropolitan area? Like all put together or multiple pieces? Because that's probably a different argument, right? And he said, a screwdriver to open every single crate that entered a city. That's the high technology you would need if people decided to bring their weapons in by truck. Right. That's the interesting thing about okay. very visible defense systems. Once it's in place, then a whole category of warfare becomes obsolete, opening up other categories of warfare, like 
delivering weapons by truck into major metropolitan areas. Perfect thing a terrorist might consider doing. Poisoning a water supply, releasing pathogens. Maybe the real solution here was what occurred to Abraham Lincoln when he said, do we not conquer our enemies when we make them our friends? Is that just me? I, I don't know. But wow. that's the world I want to live Did in. Did he say that? So this has been another installment of What's Up With That. Okay, what's up with that? All right, so I don't think he really answered the question here. Uh, how would it actually do, right? I mean, other than playing on the actual name itself. Okay, we're fine with that. Um, but my overall opinion is, is that, guys, it's going to cost a lot of money. And I mean like an like a, like an unnecessary amount of money to actually fund this project. Um, is it worth it? No. Not in our current inflationary event here, guys, right? I mean, yeah, there will be a lot of people making money, right? Mainly the weapons manufacturers. They're going to make a lot of money, a lot of money, right? But other than that, bro, no, I'm not going to, I don't back it, guys. <laughs> Me personally, I'm, I don't back it. Uh, not in this instance here. If we can kind of make it so this costs a lot less than it will, sure, do it. If you want to go ahead and do this thing. But as long as it does not start, like, obstructing our view, right? Because I can only imagine how prevalent these would have to be. You get what I'm saying here? Like, they'd have to be everywhere. Like, even in, like, national forests and things like that based off of the range. Not nah, hard pass. Hard pass. Uh, but all right, listen, you, got, uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. If you guys are new here, please like and subscribe. In the meantime, I'll catch you guys later.